Hello everyone, this is Sanjay Parashal. Welcome back to the channel. I have got many requests about creating a tutorial series on XSLT. I have covered some of some of it in some of my previous videos, but now I have decided to go through XSLT step by step. So this is going to be the first part of the XSLT series. In this, we will know what XSLT is all about, why it's important in SOA or any other integration technology. We will do a demo of transforming one XML format data to another XML format data with basic XSLT functionality. We will use Schema Builder to create schemas for source and target XML. And later on in the subsequent parts of the series, we will dive deep into XSLT concepts like conditions, variables, templates, difference between XSLT 1, 2, and some of the important functions of XSLT. So XSLT stands for Extensible Style Sheet Language Transformation and it is used to transform the XML documents. Some people use it to fetch data from XML document and feed that data in HTML pages using XPath. So we will try to touch base what XPath is. All right, so let's see what we are doing today. So this is going to be our payload number one or we can call it our source XML payload. So we have uh, customers as the root element, then we have multiple customers with number, first name, last name, and then add another nested element called address. That has got three elements, street, city, and state. And this is our second payload, or let's say the target XML payload, which has, an, again, customers as a root element, then multiple customers but uh, it has a different structure within customer. So our goal is to get the data from source payload and transform that into the target payload. So let's see what how our solution will look like regardless of what technology we use. So from source to target, we'll obviously loop over all the customers that we are getting from source. And this I indicates uh, the index. So from customers, for each customer, number will be mapped to ID in the target. And then we will concatenate first name and last name for each customer and then add that to the name. And then for the address, we will have to concatenate uh, street, city, and state and add that to address in order to achieve what we want to achieve. So, in order to do that, in SOA, we will have to first create a schema out of the source XML and the target XML. So let's start our demo. So this is a SOA application that I have created called SOA underscore training. Let's create a project here. This could be an empty composite because we are really not doing anything to do anything with SOA or people. We simply want to learn XSLT here. It just, by creating this project, it will help to use JDeveloper as an IDE. So here first we'll create two schemas. One will be uh, as per our source XML and the other one will be as per our target XML. So let's just do that really quick. So under schema, we'll create new go to the gallery and then under XML we'll see this XML schema from XML document. I'll click on OK. We'll give a name. So let's give it demo one source data. Right? And let's give the same as a namespace. Now XML document, so this is my source, this is my target, and we'll need to go to the location where we have saved those files. Here you go. Uh, this is the source XML, I click on OK and this is that simple. So if you see here, I have customer, under customers, I have multiple customers. And then we have number, first name, last name, everything it did automatically. It automatically fetched what should be the data type and everything. 
So if you want to make any changes in this, you can go to the source and maybe change uh, whatever you would want to change in here. Now let's create the second schema. It's a demo one. Target data. Here you go. This time we'll select the target XML example, right? We'll click on open. Okay. Here you go. You got customer, customer and this. So these root elements also do not have to be same. It could be totally different. Doesn't matter, right? Because now you will know how we will map. So under transformation, let me create an XSLT file. This is XSL map. Uh, a J developer provided uh, XSL editor where we can create, let's say, demo one. Under the transformation, and now it is asking whether what is the source schema. We can have more than one source, but we'll have to have only one single target. Uh, in our example, we'll have only one source and one target. So either you can go ahead and get the schema element for source, or if you're using this in Beeple, then you can sort of create an element type of variable and then use those variables in source and target. But right now, we don't really care about Beeple. It's a absolutely standalone uh, transformation language. It doesn't need Beeple engine because it works on its own engine. Uh, I'll click on browse here. We'll select the schema. So currently we want the source customers. We'll click on OK, OK here, and then in the target. So in the target also we have customers. Click on OK. OK, and one more time. Here you go. So now as you can see, the format is little bit different here it's number here it's id here are like first name last name here we only have name and then we have a uh, complex element of address it has sub elements here we just have a simple element of address so now we need to map however there is an auto map function within this xslt mapper if we would have same names from source to target we could have simply mapped it and it auto map everything according to its uh, inbuilt uh, rules. It would check that if the name matches and the type matches, it would simply map it and we won't have to do anything explicitly. But here, not much matches, but let's see. So as we can see, customer is a reoccurring element. As you can see, there are like double bracket here. So that means it's, it's more like a list. So we'll map customer to customer first. And it asks whether you would want to auto map. We have enabled auto map. So let's say OK and see if it's, if it matches anything. So as of now, not nothing. But it created a for each loop because it understood that it's a reoccurring element. So that means there are multiple customer within this customer's root element. So it created a for each loop for you automatically. I'll tell you how you can do it manually also if you do not want to go ahead and do it automatically. Now. To proceed further, you need to again map customer to customer and it will again ask for auto map and if it feels that two elements matches, it probably will match. So click on OK. And as you can see, their internal rules thought that, you know, first name is equals to name. So it auto mapped it. We can take care of it. But to understood what happened so far, let's go to source and just take a look. If you see here, everything starts with the root element called style sheet. So it's a style sheet language. So root element will always be style sheet. And then we have one major template, like the main template, which is matching the root, the current node. Uh, I'll explain about templates and how you can create multiple templates within XSLT. What is the difference between call template and apply template? All those things I'll explain probably in subsequent tutorials. So just wait for future videos. Now here it says under customers, 
for each customer do this so now if we have three customers this loop will run three times under customers create an element named customer and with name add first name which we do not want right because we want first name and last name to be concatenated and then add to name so either we can remove it from here just like this or we can go to design and expand this and we can select this and remove it from here as well the same thing let's save it so now simply we want number to be mapped to id there is nothing too fancy about it right we save it come to source and we see that the id has been mapped to the number so if you see here it's simply number rather than customers customer number because on for each we have already given x path till here so this is called x path how you traverse through your xml payload is known as x path so for each customer so that means our compiler or is already in the customer element and inside customer element we have number as you can see here so we are already here for the first customer so this is number now let's come here and see how we can add any function or any basic out of the box function on any element so for name right click create x path and under the string function we have this concat right and it has a bunch of functions that you can use it has not node set functions mathematical depending on your need you can use any of those functions as of now we want to concatenate first name and last name so you double click here uh, first name and then we want a space so space in uh, single quotes and we want the last name let's save it now let's see the source so that's how your name element looks like it's not mandatory that you have to use this ui here like we did you can simply if you are if you have done enough practice you can simply come here and start typing and do this but i personally recommend to uh, use the ui because you you know that you will not be making any kind of syntax error if you follow the ui and now in address we have uh, street city and state so let's quickly do that xpath string functions concat double click on concat and we will expand here so first we have street then we have a comma then we have city then again we have a comma and then we have state and click on ok now if you come to source your address is also here so now regardless of what your source or what your target looks like if you have the mapping rules handy that what you want to achieve once your xslt coding is complete it doesn't matter whether it is called customer it's called agent or whatever it is if you know the mapping rules you can do it at least with these basic functionalities and to test it as i said we are not dependent on people at the moment weblogic or anything so we can test it locally we don't have to deploy this anywhere so for that there is this test icon here click here now it asks whether would that be okay if i generate a source file sure let, let it generate a dummy source file and we'll click on ok and it will show us the target xml as well so if i click on ok here so this is a dummy file that it created for me now what i can do is i can hit my source let's say i want to have all the customers from here and i want to replace all the customers from here so now it has like my file that i uh, want to check with and let's test it again 
and this time we will uncheck this generate source XML because again it will fill that XML with dummy data now because I have my source XML this one I have my data in it so we'll uncheck this one and we'll click on OK so now as you can see this this looks similar to our target file so number is transformed to ID and name and address looks exactly the way we want so this is it for demo one kind of important if you have never worked on XSLT but if you have worked on XSLT this is quite basic but I say if you have worked good enough on your basics then everything is simple so in future tutorials I'll show you guys how template works how you can use if else choose when otherwise how to create variables how to use some of the functions like position local etc etc to uh, make the most of your uh, XSL transformation within your Beeper logic or even otherwise if you're not a SOA developer but you would want to use XSLT in your uh, technologies you can you can do that so this is it for now uh, for this video I will post second part of this uh, tutorial series really soon thank you so much for your time guys take good care of yourselves and have a nice rest of the day thank you